Hello everyone, back to you today's first video, JMA Friday for today's first video. So as was on a Friday, we're having a detailed look at the weather for the next month. This takes us into the middle of February uh, and there's signs of colder weather on the way. Of course, in fact, it is colder right now and it may get even colder in the week ahead. We'll have more on that in today's second video update that will be coming up on the homepage later on this afternoon. But JMA Friday is going to be discussing weather for next month. We're going to have a look at the Japanese and CFS V2 models to see what they are both showing uh, for the next month, taking us from January through to February. So that's what we're beginning with at Gauss uh today. So I'm going to start off with the 500 mm of our height anomaly flow charts, and these are broken down into weekly pairs from the JMA. Um, North Pole view down, first of all. So this is the North Pole of the uh, Northern Hemisphere just here, the middle latitudes. Of, Norman of the Northern Hemisphere are around there. 500 millibars is an area in the atmosphere. High pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. Uh, and that essentially is what weather is, a movement of air by the jet stream. Blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange and red extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure. Uh, so this is the week one uh, anomaly taking us from the 18th through to the 25th of January with below average height centred to the south of the UK and then we've got above average heights through the middle of the Atlantic and pushing up towards Iceland and Greenland and so there's a deep trough into east parts of, of America as well so we're doing something a little bit like that with the flow with the jet stream we're placed onto the cold side of the jet there I've got an area of low pressure just to our south and southeast which means we're likely to be pulling in the winds from an east or northeasterly direction that looks cold and wintry maybe increasingly so in the week ahead then we go through to week two. It takes us from the 25th of January to the 1st of February. No real changes, really. Below average heights continue to sit to our south, over and to the south of the UK. And then we've got this blocking feature that is sitting in the uh, northern part of the Atlantic and up towards Greenland. That's proper northern blocking with another deep trough of below average heights still there covering much of eastern and northeastern America. So again, the flow and the jet is going to be going some thing a little bit like that and uh, it looks cold for both sides of the Atlantic we'll be pulling down really cold air from the Arctic and Canada into Eastern America and we'll be pulling down really cold air from the Arctic and Russia into Europe and so we can expect a cold and wintry end to uh, January there if that comes off we'll be bringing in the winds from an east or northeasterly direction uh, so snow definitely would be um, on the cards there and temperatures would be uh, really cold as well very wintry end to January and then we go through to weeks three and four taking us from the first through to the 15th of February still with this extensive northern blocking feature around Greenland so it's still got signs of northern blocking Below average heights are just shifting a little bit more to our west, southwest, and starting to push a bit further northwards as well. So, still it's very cold for eastern parts of America. We're still plunging down those northerly winds there. For us, we're possibly starting to turn a little bit less cold as the wind just begins to get a little bit more of an Atlantic influence. Now, remember, this is a two-weekly anomaly. So it might be that week three is still very cold, wintry block the first week of February perhaps um, still really wintry conditions. And then maybe the second week of February sees just a little bit more influence from the Atlantic and it starts to thaw out. We start to go more towards rain rather than snow. You can never rule out a transition within a two-weekly period. But overall, it still looks pretty cold, I have to say, and still signs of extensive northern blocking sitting there over Greenland and up to the North Pole as well. Let's have a look at tropical and mid-latitude view then from the uh, JMA. So uh, this is where British Isles is on this view. We're up here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. That's the equator of the uh, Earth just there. We've got the northern hemisphere uh, of the Earth up there. We've got the southern hemisphere 
uh, down there. The South Pole would be off the chart down here. We can't see that. And the North Pole is off the chart again. That's up there somewhere. Of course, we're just looking at the North Pole uh, view down. Uh, this is North America and Canada just here. This is kind of like Russia uh, just there. That's Asia down there. Uh, Japan over there. And, uh, of course, North Atlantic is just here. This, all of this here is the Pacific. And finally, again, the British are just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. So that's the geography lesson for today. So, reminder of the um, week one 500 millibar height anomaly. This is from the uh, 18th to the 25th of January. Again, we have the below average heights to ourselves. We have the blocking feature in the Atlantic and pushing up to the north. Again, remember, Greenland and the North Pole is off this view and Scandinavia as well but we just looked at that view down so we know throughout this period there's extensive northern blocking going on particularly focused around Greenland. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead are colder than average below average temperature anomalies not just for the UK but for many parts of Europe as well look how cold it is across Canada and many northern eastern parts of America it's warm out on the western side of the states but through those um, areas in the north and the east and the northeast very 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 cold conditions there so both sides of the Atlantic America and Europe looking cold in the week ahead hair precipitation anomalies are like this so a little bit dry on average remember cold air will always hold less moisture than mild or warm air so typically it will be dry when it's cold in the winter but any precipitation that does fall will fall as snow and it doesn't take very much snow at all to start causing disruption, of course. So, um, dry but cold in the week ahead. Then we go through to week two. This is taking us from the 25th of January to the 1st of February. The final week of January 2018 has this deep area below average heights to the south. Blocking is up to the north, going up towards Greenland up here. Below average heights into the east of America as well. So it's cold into the east of the states and it's cold into the north and uh, the west of Europe as well. There's the temperature anomaly. It's still coming out colder than average for the UK and for Ireland too. Many parts of Europe still forecast to be colder than average as well really intensely cold across northern and east parts of, the, of America. I think if that comes off, we could well be hearing about cold temperature records being broken for eastern and northeastern parts of the state. So, yes, both sides of the Atlantic will be cold at the same time, but it looks like the east of the states and the north of the states in for a really severe, maybe even record-breakingly cold spell of weather over there. We're going to be hearing about that in the next week or two. Precipitation anomalies look like this um, from the 25th through to the 1st of uh, February. And uh, we see that it's generally a little bit on the dry and average side, although to the south of us it is a bit wetter than average. Of course, with a cold and average temperature normally, we do have to be thinking about snow. So there could be an increasing risk of snow with these cold temperatures and north and easterly winds. Uh, increasing risk of snow through the uh, final week to 10 days of January. Then we're into week three and four. It takes us from the 1st through to the 15th of February. The first half of February still has quite a strong blocking signal. There's still a high pressure up here around Greenland and it's sending back into the North Pole. Um, we're close to this area of below average heights that's almost centred over the top of the UK. So it does imply that the jet stream is coming back a little bit further north through the first half of February. And that means that the temperature anomaly starts to lift up a little bit. So we lose those colder than average temperature anomalies. Generally, we go closer to average. It's possibly still a little bit on the cold and average side, I have to say. But overall, it does look as though it's a less cold period for the first half of February. Remember, it's a two-weekly uh, period, though, so it could be transition. And certainly, either in week 
three or week four, you could get some sort of um, very cold conditions still. Maybe something like week three sees a relaxation of the cold and then it comes back in week four. It could be something like week three is very cold and then week four turns milder. Uh, and then the, temp the precipitation anomaly is also looking above average here. So it's a, it is a more unsettled period. Um, of course, as we're coming out of that very cold end to January, uh, and it's turning more unsettled and less cold, there would be the prospect, undoubtedly, of very substantial snowfalls till eventually the milder air starts to break through. So overall, I think this is still looking pretty cold and wintry, certainly into the opening days of February, before it possibly begins to uh, turn a little bit less cold and perhaps a bit milder. Right, so we see how the CFSV2 is comparing with this. These are 500 millibar heights. Again, they're broken down into weekly periods. The first week period takes, takes us from the 18th to the 24th of January. Below average heights are centred to our south. We've got a blocking signal in the middle of the Atlantic, an area high pressure is up there. Not northern blocking, though. Although there is a little bit of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland. Uh, looks pretty cold, this. We'll be bringing the wind in from the north or northeast with a um, trough within the 500 millibar flow. So um, it's trying to maintain a westerly flow, actually. It still has this ridge in the middle of the Atlantic. still has low pressure up here to the south of Greenland. So the westerlies are coming across the Atlantic rather like that. But then they're diving southwards around that trough within the 500 millibar flow. And that leaves us pulling in either cold easterly or potentially even uh, northeasterly winds in week one. Week two looks like this. Uh, so again, we've got this deep trough over and to the south of the UK, very much in line with what the JMA is uh, showing. The ridge is in the central part of the North Atlantic. Uh, also very deep trough into the east of America as well. So again, we'll be doing something a little bit like this with the flow, uh, with the jet stream. It's not a genuine northern blocking signal, but it's certainly enough to have us cold or even very cold on both sides of the uh, Atlantic, we would be pulling down cold air into that trough of the low average heights that's across the west of uh, Europe. So cold and wintry end January in agreement with both the JMA CFSV2 today. Then we're through to week three. This one is the first through to the 7th of February. Um, the below average heights are still in the northeast of America. They're coming across the Atlantic into uh, Europe like that. Um, again, we have got a bit of a northern blocking signal now. We've got high pressure appearing around Greenland and extending back into the North Pole. Um, but just a little bit more of a westerly influence, perhaps, with the flow with the jet there through the first week of February. It could still be cold and wintry at times, but the position of that below average height area just to southwest of Ireland uh, might maybe have slightly more of an Atlantic influence to the air. However, for northern parts of the country, we're possibly still bringing in the wind from an easterly. Uh, direction up there. So it might be that there's a battle going on there, actually. Might have some sort of um, contrast between cold and mild air with weather fronts as well. Uh, so rain, snow could all be going on through the first week of February. And then we get through to week two. It's the 8th to the 14th of February. By then, the below average heights are centred over the top of the country. The above average heights are still there across Greenland, but it looks like they're weakening a little bit. And I think overall, we're starting to bring in more of an Atlantic flow there. So that's starting to turn things milder through the second week of February, thawing things out. And we're looking more towards rain, I would have thought, by that point rather than snow. Week one temperature anomalies from the 18th to 24th of January are colder than average for the UK and Ireland and most parts of Europe are colder than average as well. Actually going towards the freezer type cold temperatures under three degrees below average through Central Europe is going to be bitterly cold in the week ahead. And then we go through to week uh, two. This is the 25th through to the 31st of January. Again, colder than average for the UK and Ireland. Most parts of Europe also cold and average and exceptionally cold across many northern, central and eastern parts of America. Really, really cold up there. We could be breaking records, in fact, for cold through that final week of January. Severely cold. I know you have people watching in America. You have to get ready if you're in the north and the east of the states, you could be severely cold with this uh, through the final week or so of 
January. And this lasts into the first week of February. Look at that. Exceptionally cold across nearly all parts of the states. Away from the far west, northwest is Pacific coast. It is milder there. But really, most parts of the states and Canada are, are well and truly in the freezer for the first week of February, the first tenth of February. For the UK, it's colder than average. Not quite as cold as it is in weeks one and two, but still below average temperature Anomaly, so a cold start to February still being predicted there. And then we go through to week four. It takes us from the 8th to the 14th of February. Just a little bit below average for the UK and Ireland then. And most parts of Europe by the second week of February are returning to milder than average temperature. So the first half of February does see these cold conditions beginning to relax. It takes a while but very gradually we see the cold temperature anomalies beginning to ease across Europe. And also by week four, much of America is coming out of the freezer as well. Um, still cold in the east and the southeast of America, but nowhere near as cold as it is in weeks two and three. Uh, and many northern parts are actually going a little bit milder. Precipitation, finally, so week one, precipitation anomalies of CFSV2 from the 18th to 24th of January. For the UK, generally, it is um, around average, to be honest, or a little bit drier than average up in the north. Then we go through to um, week two. Now, this looks really interesting. This is the 25th uh, uh, through to the 31st of January. It's average to above average with precipitation, and particularly so to our south and also across central parts of Europe. Now, this one is bitterly cold, so most of that precipitation is very likely to be snow. You can expect substantial amounts of snow through much of central and northern Europe and I'm sure the British Isles would be included in that as well at times. Then week three it's the first of the seventh of February still hinting at being average to above average with precipitation particularly so to the south and the southwest of the country. Again there is a definite snow risk in there uh, it may start to turn a little bit less cold later on, but definite snow risk there through the first week of February. Then by the time you get through to the final um, uh, week, week period, which is week four, it's the 8th to the 14th of February. Generally above average with precipitation for the UK and for much of central and northern Europe too. This is as it's starting to turn milder. So by this point, by week four, we're probably looking away from the hills anyway, Probably, probably looking more towards rain rather than uh, snow as we begin to thaw out. But it does look quite unsettled uh, by week two. So, very interesting Jeremy Friday again this week. And it looks like uh, winter's going to be biting on both sides of the Atlantic. I think it could be shaping up for some record-breaking cold for northern eastern parts of the states. But in the UK and across northern Europe, it is going to be cold enough as well. We probably won't be breaking records, but it's certainly going to be cold, maybe even very cold at times. And uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's some really significant snowfalls around as well, possibly even in the UK and Ireland too. There is a hint that by the time you get through to the second week of February, we're possibly coming out of that cold weather, turning things uh, less cold and more towards rain rather than snow. That's a very long way out. It's week four and these models will always try and get us back to the default setting, which is, of course, westerly. Um, so I wouldn't take that all that seriously. I think before we get there, if we do get to that, by the second week of February. I think before we get there, we are in for some pretty cold and wintry weather, to say the least. So get your woolies out, get the electric blanket on. I think we're in for it over the next week or two. Going to get a lot colder and also an increasing risk of snow. Remember, these long-range wells are always highly experimental, so they are prone to chopping and changing. It could look different next week. That's uh, how it's looking, though, for this week. We'll be back later on this afternoon with your week to 10-day video update, so come back for that then. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.